Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Rahmanirrahim maliki yaumiddin. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in. Ihdinas siratal mustaqim. Siratal ladzina an'amta 'alaihim ghairil ma'dubi 'alaihim waladdallin. Allahu allazi jalla lakum ar-ladh ghararan wa samaa'a bina'an wa sawwarakum fa ahsanu suwarakum wa raja'un min dhaibat. Zalikumullahu rabbukum fa tabarakallahu alamin huwa al-hayyu la ilaha illa huwa fa'duhu mukhlishin lahu ad-din alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina azaban nar subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin Amin shukran namma imam jalo bishop you have the floor please thank you chairman lord god Almighty God of power and might, God of compassion and of healing and of forgiveness, we continue to bring the world before you that is plagued by this coronavirus that has killed thousands of people. We continue to ask that by your divine grace and mercy that you look kindly upon the world that you have created and that of your mercy and grace that you eliminate this virus from our world so that life will return to normal. These we know you can do for us when we ask and plead for mercy. And we continue to submit the TRRC to you as we begin another session today. And we submit all the witnesses that will be coming before the TRRC. And we ask that each and every one of them will be resolved to speak the truth and that you'll grant the commission the design in spirit to be able to design between truth and falsehood. And we know that at the end of it all, that you are the just judge of all humankind. And you will make the necessary reparation, the necessary reconciliation, and you will give the necessary judgment. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Emma Bishop Adeko. Um, as we indicated earlier, we're starting a new session, and uh, I will read a brief um, a statement on behalf of the commissioners, and uh, then we continue with our proceedings. The statement reads as follows. On Thursday, March 20, March, sorry, March 5th, 2020, the TRRC concluded its 12th three-week session of public hearings, which focused on the arbitrary arrest and the detention of public servants and the private persons. During that session, 14 witnesses appeared before the commission. The total number of witnesses appearing before the Commission since the commencement of the public hearings on January 7, 2019, is now 217. The witnesses included 54 women, 40 alleged um, perpetrators and adversely mentioned persons, as well as um, uh, some expert witnesses. 25 um, Gambian diaspora witnesses also testified via video link. <coughs> we begin the 13th session today, which will end on Thursday, April 2nd. Approximately two weeks of this session will focus on hearing evidence of unlawful attacks against um, uh, road users by James um, uh, Convoy. Yeah, his convoys. The remaining period will be used 
to commence the institutional hearings on the prison system and uh, the violation of the rights of the inmates and the detainees. As we reached them a, a few weeks ago, the halfway mark of our two-year mandate, it is fitting and proper to remind the public the major themes we have covered so far and the ones remaining. From January 2019 to March 2020, the Commission inter alia held public hearings on the following themes. One, circumstances surrounding the July 22, 1994 coup d'etat. Two, the November 11, 1994 incident. Three, the June 1995 murder of uh, former finance minister Usman Koro Sisse. Four, the 1996 incident involving supporters of the opposition United Democratic Party and security forces at Denton Bridge. Five, crackdown on the media and violations of uh, human rights against some journalists. Six, the unlawful killing of students during the April 2000 student dem demonstrations. Seven, the violations and the rights abuses carried out by the junglers. Eight, sexual and gender-based violence against women by Yaya Jame. Nine, the 2009 presidential witch hunts. Ten, attacks on religious freedoms. And 11, arbitrary arrest, detention, torture of public servants and uh, private citizens. The remaining themes on the Commission's summer work uh, plan include the following. One, the former president, some HIV, AIDS, and uh, other diseases alternate, uh, alternative treatment program. Two, enforce the disappearances. Three, the case of the 44 Ghanaians and other West African migrants who were killed in the Gambia in July 2005. Four, the April 2016 incidents involving the NIA and the resulting death in custody of UDP member Solo Sanding. Five, institutional hearings on the National Intelligence uh, Agency, NIA, the judiciary, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. Six, additional hearings on sexual and gender-based violence, and the seven, the Jungler Summer uh, Part Two, including the attempted assassination of veteran lawyer, Mr. Osman Silla. Under our work plan, the Commission intends to conclude its summer public hearings during the first week of October, 2020. The rest of the year will be devoted to a preparation of the final report of the TRRC. And as and when required, occasional public hearings may be convened. The evidence adduced before the Commission during the above mentioned public hearings shows gross violations, gross human rights violations against the Gambian people. During the last session, we also heard the gruesome accounts of the decapitation and dismemberment of the bodies of detainees to be fed to crocodiles at Yamesama residence in Kanilai. These wanton acts of barbarity 
defied all standards of uh, human decency and constituted gross violations of rights of not just um, the victims, their families, but also those of all Gambians. Since the TRRC summer public hearings began, the conscience of the nation is being repeatedly shocked by the revelations of sheer uh, brutality meted out to uh, victims. The revelations some have also sparked a serious national conversation and soul searching that seeks some to understand just how such acts of barbarity could have uh, could happen in this country. As we journey further into this second and final year of our mandate, the Commission remains firmly committed to the pursuit of the truth without fear or favor, affection or ill will with regard some, to any individual or group of individuals. We remain committed to the cause of um, the victims, the welfare of our nation, and uh, to helping guarantee non-recurrence of um, uh, the senseless violations and abuses that occurred in this country. It is in this spirit that the Commission wishes to further encourage all victims of human rights violations and all persons who have information that would be helpful to the Commission's work to please come forward and share their stories. While not every witness that gives a statement is guaranteed to testify in a public hearing, every statement received is a valuable addition to the historical record the Commission is mandated to establish. For the work of that term, uh, we, do, uh, we do hear um, at uh, the TRRC, every voice matters. As usual, we crave the continued support and the blessings of the public. I thank you all. That's the end of the statement on behalf of um, the uh, Commissioners. A council, are we ready with this morning's witness? If so, please proceed. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, and members of the audience. Uh, we are ready to proceed, and may I ask the officer to bring in the witness, please. Uh, but, Mr. Chair, whilst that is being done, uh, uh, something came up uh, during the weekend which requires a bit of clarification on my part. Uh, as you may recall, Mr. Chair, I paid a visit to uh, Imam Ture of Gunjur, and uh, a photograph of me, him, and uh, one of his ustasis is put on social media with the suggestion that I went to Mr. Ture to apologize to him. I don't know for what. Uh, for the first time, perhaps it behoves me to clarify and to make the public understand uh, actually what happened. I state quite clearly and categorically that I did not go to Imam Ture to apologize to him for anything. In fact, I have no reason to apologize to Imam Ture or to any Imam or to any person who appears before the TRRC because every individual witness who appeared here had been treated properly and with utmost respect, despite what some people may want to believe. Uh, so I had no reason to apologize to Imam Ture for anything whatsoever. That was not the purpose of my visit to the Imam. Uh, all our Imams are treated with the same respect as we would treat any Gambian who appears before the Commission. It does not matter whether one is an imam or one is a laborer. We treat them all equally and with the same measure of respect as human beings. When I went to the imam, it was for some other reason, important to the work of the commission, and in the fullness of time, the reasons of my visit would become well known to, to all those who are interested in the work of the commission. So to just Finally, 
and completely, without doubt, clear this suggestion that I went to this imam to apologize. No, that is not true. That did not happen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council, for that clarification. Um, if you went out there, you didn't go on your um, personal, in your personal capacity. You were a member of our team that went out there, and uh, the team certainly would not have instructed you to go and apologize to anybody. If, if that is to be done, we would discuss it and then find a way of uh, uh, getting that. But thank you for the clarification. You may now proceed with the witness. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, where is Mr. Kambi? Uh, uh, could you kindly swear in the witness? Uh, Mr. Kambi, uh, maybe you are sorting out the issue of language. Uh, could you clarify with the witness in which language he would wish to speak? And then uh, we sort out the issue of the interpretation. Can we proceed, please? Aye, Musa Sala. Man Musa Sala. Man Musa Sala. Do swear that. Mange Watne. Mange Watne. I'll speak the truth. Dinawa Diga. Dinawa Diga. The whole truth. Diga Biep. Diga Biep. And nothing but the truth. Do my fear, Lenin Lul Diga. Do my fear, Lenin Lul Diga. Do my Diga. So help me God. Can you allow me to be Mr. Sala, welcome to the TRRC. Mr. Sala, you will add a little fee to TRRC. Um, in this hearing, we propose to discuss three or four important issues with you. First is to establish your identity and biographical information. Uh, the second is to deal with uh, an incident that happened in Omorto where you were shot together with a person called Pamani who later died out of his injuries. Uh, we would also add a new issue to it, that is your interaction with, with the junglers in, at around 2007 onwards. In 2007, we and the, uh, the, the fourth would be uh, when your taxi was hit by uh, one of the vehicles uh, of the Jame convoy. That event took place during the uh, first official visit of Makisala out of Senegal to the Gambia. And finally, we would deal with an encounter you, you, you <coughs> an encounter you had with Esa Baji, uh, called Jesus, uh, uh, sometime after 2011, when uh, he butt uh, struck you with a pistol. Are you ready to proceed with, uh, in this conversation? Wow. Yes. Uh, what are your full names? 
wah ñu naka nga tuddak naka nga sante Musa Sala uh, Mr Sala you have to allow 3 seconds between your speech and that of the interpreter so that um, the statements would not overlap Sala buñu la joxe sa laccé bi paré da nga xaar ñu lappato ko nga dal di dalu tollu ci ñetti seconde nga dora tontu laccé bi uh, Mr. Sala, are you known by any other name? Do you have an, ali an alias? Uh, Mr. Sala, I am not been in turbo. I am not been in the house. I am not Wow. Yes. What is it? Banturla. Gore. Naka. Gore Island. Gore Island. Wow. Y yes. Uh, sometimes you are also called Gore. Gore, yeah. Yes. Uh, what's your date and place of birth? Fourteen November 1974. Pagaliba. Um, where did you go to school? Fanga Jange School. I went to the Islamic schools. Where would that be? Kaliba. Fanga Jange Dara. Kaliba. Could you tell us what you were doing in 2000 and 2001? Did you know what you were doing in 2000 and 2001? I was a photographer. Safedin. At Safedin. And as a photographer at Safedin, what, tell us briefly all the activities that you were involved in at the time. Kam ka natal kan nga won Safedin, dama mga nga wahal nyo, yungu yunga ham naib, mga mga don def ki jama nububu. That time, some um, uh, my Arbu um, ninety six lad joined Safedin. Joined Safedin in nineteen ninety six. Manega photographer. And became a photographer. Manega professional photographer. And I later on became a professional photographer. Oh, Manega the legal. I, I was working there. I go, to, I go to naming ceremonies, to marriages, to birthday celebrations. I'm in a photo studio at Burfoot. Until I established my own photo studio in Burfoot. And also in Brikama Bar. When I left there, I decided to go out and seek prayers. Uh, when was that? Lolo can you learn? Lolo, we tombe for it. Two thousand. That was around two thousand. Well, at what time in? In 2000, was it the beginning of 2000, mid 2000, or towards the end of 2000? Of 2000. I went to Atum 2000. It was at the end in December. Could you tell us where you went to seek for prayers? That was in Nyare. Kazamas. In Kazamas. Why Nyare in Kazamas? You don't have them Nyare for who take Kazamas. There was one marabu there. Of la demo utinyan. That was where I went to to seek for prayers. And tell us what happened uh, while you were there. When I got there, he divined for me. Excuse me, he what? 
that it divined for me. Uh, what did, what, wouldn't that imply uh, looking into the future? Divination, yeah. All right. Okay, proceed, please. After he performed the divination for me, he gave me some herbs. Uh, uh, she said garap. Yes. Uh, that would translate to medicine. What kind of medicine or what kind of garap did he give you? garap This was some powder. Did he give you any herbs? Yes. Yes. Wow. He gave me some herbs and some leaves. Ag I hope. Wow. Yes. And where did you put them? You mula johna for kodef. Ne madam sanguko. He asked me to bathe with them. For seven days. For seven days. Yeah, my dear Lord. And uh, when it is finished, that I should return. Help us understand where you meant to carry this powder, herbs, and leaves to wherever you live, to wash with them for seven days, and then to later return to him. Is that what you're suggesting? Well, uh, yes, Where did you put the stuff he gave you? In a bag. Plastic bag in you am calendar. The plastic bags that have calendars. Okay. The ones looking like the Ghana must go. Or, or is it a different type? <laughs> It's different. That, that is uh, the ones, the, the jungular killing weapon. Is the, the ones they put over the head. Could be. Okay, good. So, so while there, as you are preparing to return to Gambia, did you encounter anybody there? My meeting with someone was during my return, after the ending of the initial first seven days and my return, that was in 2001. Uh, so you went for the first time. Yes. He gave you all this stuff. Yes. You came back to the combos, and you used what he gave you. Yes. So you returned again uh, in end, end of January. End right? of January, yeah. Uh, the family, you are bang for the me. Bamla lo jo he bagas yo yeb. Danga ni bisi wat combo. January. Wow. Yes. So tell us what happened while you were there the second time. When I returned, the Lord said to him, it's been a while and I did not return back. It was because I had some difficulties. I want you to add for me a little bit of the prayers. Did he also look into the future again for you? Dah banga de luati no no de fal se la lat nala. Wow, mune man nala jo bena fas. He said, nala jo bena fas mo inde fas bumi red and yellow, red and white and black bumi fasi. He said he would give me a string which was uh, having red and white. 
for Lorenz. Legi Manoko Wow. I said to him, I said to him, yes, assist me. And and what was that for? The knots. Those thread tied in knots. What what were what were they for? So that I'll be popular in the work. Okay. And what happened after that? Wow, Ghana lul naglan mo hew. Panan for boset. I spent the night there. Next morning. Tuak bangon. I waited until the evening. I discussed with him. I said to him, I am supposed to return home. I said, well, it is difficult to have transport here. I said, yes, I can work here up to Subanor. And then I will look for a vehicle. As we were speaking, was when Pamane came and met me in the village. Did you know this Pamane before? Pamane is Yes, Pamane is a native of Burfoot, and that is where I had my photo studio. Did you have a relationship with him before? Ndah amna ben joko bo amam mom balalulu. Wah, dapde nyau andak dombi sunyi masih nak kena talko. Yes, he usually came along with his child, and I used to photograph them. So you were familiar with this person. Bonda family ni minat tengah ag mom. Wow. Yes. So tell us what happened when he found you at the village. Lagi wah nyu lana heu nak bamla fake fufu. Bum nyu efek masih dekat benyaire. When he came and uh, met me in the village, Nyaire, that was in the evening, and I said, uh, who is this, Pamane? And he said to me, yes. I said to him, behold, you are here. And he said to me, yes, I came on a mission. And he asked me, what about you? I said, well, I also came to this old man. So he said to me, now, how is it? I said to him, for me, if at all I have the time, I would go home now. He said to me, I will be going tomorrow in the morning. That was on a Friday. And I said to him, then in that case, uh, would you not uh, spare me a lift and take me along? At this point, did Pamane have any means of transport? Yes, he had a motorbike, a rider. Uh, you told us that you knew Pamane before. Do you know what kind of work he was doing? Well, because What I know him, know him for was uh, buying of sheep and rearing. But apart from that, did you know what mission? He went to do in Nyaire. He didn't tell me. So after he told you that he was leaving in the morning, on the Friday morning, what happened? I said to him, when leaving, take me along if you can. And then, he said to me, it's going to be early morning. Okay, no problem. I said, okay, no problem. Early morning, he came and picked me up. 
with them and we left so when they were bo umorto when we went till umorto ola johnson bi neka that is where you have the johnson we refer them siliti one goes to siliti bi dem juboro this other one goes to juboro bi dem umorto and the other one goes to umorto and umorto in which country it is umorto mo ban riu la neka gambia gambia proceed please when tone is johnson b when we took a turn by the junction we them yoni umorto b we took the road to umorto when jele yoni umorto b di dem umorto when we took that route going to umorto when fun fun turn no gisuma checkpoint where we took a turn i did not see any checkpoint gisuma lo xamene mun na wax nene fi nit mung fi and i did not also see any sign which will indicate that there was someone around when i got out with them mo mo ngi dawal we gave our bag going and he was riding la dega ay fetal that was when i had gone shot did you hear any warning shot ndax bala nga dega bali fetal bo amna ben bal bo xamne wajale nañ len ko de de no denkulen did you hear anybody she any orders for you to stop ndax degon ngeen ken ku len waxon ne ngeen taxaw e de wallahi no to go ma ken i didn't see anyone the first shots you heard the first shot was it just one shot or was it a succession of shots bal bi nga dega ñu soxi ko benn bal rek la wala ay bal yu teklande la wali kay bu mi ñew compuso bos bal ñu doon ñew ñu doon romba ci suma nopay we shot we are, we are coming in succession they were passing over my ears and over my side and around my side would you say it was sustained gunfire mun nga wax ne bal la yo xamne dañ ko saxalon re di continuer rek di soxi Wow. Yes. And for how long did you continue to hear these gunshots? Uh bal yoyu nga continue won di degg rek nak mom ci ban appel la tollu won. Bal nak waxtu la jël. Bal nak gawna lol the shots were quick. Du mom na fatali ko day moy bal bu malal. the only thing i can remember was the the bullet that hit me between the first bullet or gunshot that you heard and the time you were hit could you give us an indication how far you had ridden uh, on that motorcycle motorcycle uh digante bi nga degge bal bu ñëk bi biñ ko soxi ak jamono ji nga xamé né benen bal bay mu ngi doon ñew ndax di ñu mëna wax fan nga tollu won ci motorcycle bi digënté ñaar yoyu ko ci tollu won did you ride for 100 meters 50 meters 30 20 or 10 da won nga lu tollu ci téméri metal juroom fukka fan wër wala fukki metal bali amba bu soutien bi di start when the firing started moy fuñ tourné ci johnson bi di dem was where we bended from the johnson going ko mun na ko estimate comme like fi ba ci kaw tali bi i can estimate from here up to the highway comme buda bay lu muy daw ba ci kaw tali bi that is the distance covered the fire and we start that is the distance covered sorry ne ko dañu tourné rek gaay sut dede dañu tourné jël awa jël suñu yoon ba paré di dem comme fi ba ci kaw tali bi la gaay commencer sout the fire did not start instantly when we took the bend we took the bend and we traveled a distance which i can estimate from here to the highway when the shooting started but when the shooting started how much longer did you have to travel before you were hit by the bullet wa bi fetel yo buñ ko commencer di soxina yo ban dir nga ngeen daw ci sen motorcycle bobu bala len bal bi di dal 
sori na nak so this long distance fuñu bal bi lalé ak fuñu daanu dafa sori we are the bullet hitters and we are we fell is uh, tell tell us what happened after you heard the first gunshot wax ñu bi nga ñëkké dégg bal yi ñu soxi ko lan mo xew mo wax pané pour mu taxaw i told pa to stop mu ne ma ñi ay rebel lañ he said to me these are rebels rebels from where do you know ndax xam nga rebel yoy fuñ bayé ko mané ko yeen fu so rebel mu ne ma ñ dem i asked him what kind of rebels and he said to me let's go time bob ga ya nga shoot that time they were shooting while we were talking mo bal bi lalé ci la ko wax né bal bi lal na ma but when i was hit was when i told him that i was hit how did you react when you were hit by the gun by the bullet bala bal bal lalé nak yow no def bal bu mo lalé ci gana dama teud ci kawam when the bullet hit me on my back i leaned on him i fell on him mo ne mo tamen bal bi lal nako he said to me he too was hit by a bullet nako stop i said to him stop ngi teud ci ko bar bi he was leaning on the steering on on the handle man tamen teud ci kawam and i was also leaning on his back then moto bay bi dug ci pa That was when the motorbike went into a hole, a ditch, a ditch, and we fell. So when Dano, when we fell, a barangu, I rolled over, a virus he got up be, and I leaned on a tree. On the mubarangu, he also rolled over, when you tried to smack out tangabi, and he came and lay on top of my leg. ne ma man dama de he said to me i am dying na ko man tammi dama de i said to him i too am dying na ko tay ajumala i said to him today is friday ne ñaan ci yalla let us pray to god kuma sa wallahi ilaha illallah and we started reciting verses muhammad rasulullah mom sila ho gis mom mu de that was when i saw him die man tam sila xam That was where I also fainted. Motuma. I didn't realize anything. Ya ganañ fa. We are there for a long time. Ma hol suma time ci wajj bi. When I looked at uh, the time on my watch, ngi nek 11. It was 11. Ah. Uh, this incident happened at what time of the day? Li bi mo xew ban waxtu la won ci bes bi. 7. Six to seven, si suba. Between six and seven in the morning, and that's when you fainted, correct? Jamano jojo na chinga hum. Wow. Yes. And can you recall what time you woke up? What time you recovered? Munga fateleku, fateleku kanga himaleku. Kum na makhebi, mano holmo on time. I fainted and I. recovered but i did not check my time ci la suma tank bi mu ngi dis because ki mu ci tada that time my leg was uh, numb because this uh, guy was lying on it mo ma try pour push push ko mu wacc suma ko tank bi i tried to push him away from my leg so no mo joge nonu so as i stood to xaji suma tank bi to pull my leg mo dret bi nawat i my blood spotted from my body so bum nawate ma tedar ci barka bi so when the blood spot up spot out i lay down again amato ma fuma neka and i did not know where i was abu ma hipe wat when i recovered my around 11 that was when it was around 11 and what happened after that la na xew ga daam lolu la gis bena pa That was when I saw one old man, Damakadla, a, a shepherd from Nagla. He had cattle. I'm a bicycle. He had a bicycle. I raised my hand to him. Mutek bike bisisuf. He placed his bicycle on the ground. 
We, we walked into the grass to where I was because where we lay down and the highway was a little bit distant where we left our motorbike line on the highway. So he came and when he saw that the man was dead, that was when he ran back, picked his bicycle and left. At, up to this point, how many people were there in the car when you arrived? Did you see uh, those who were responsible or those who sought at you? Ne ci jamono joju nak na gis ngeen ñi nga xamne ñoo leen fetel. Wa bu pa bi deme. Yes, after the old man left. La dégg ci bir ñax bi amna ñuy dox di ñew. That was when I heard people walking inside the grass coming. Da nga dégg noise bi. I heard the noise. Mu ñu ma leen gis. But I could not see them. Because I was uh, giving them my back. So when I, they came walking by, I said, who is that? Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? That was when he came and stood in front of me with his gun. Then can you even said be? The other one came through the other side I was a Pamane. and stood by Pamane. Did you see what they were wearing? Gison Galin Sol. They had military camouflage on them. They had their they had, they had their, their caps and also had weapons. So now, after you stood, the boss, they were, their boss was on the gravel road. And uh, uh, the, the boss, what, uh, what race did you disc did, were you able to tell the race of the boss? The boss be Munonga Hamon, but for some he had loan. Why? Because Mangegis bad be sergeant la. Nit kuwe hala wala kunyul wala. Kunyul la. Was a black person. Wala gul no no wale mahogana kunyul. Not very black as such. I am darker than him. Mangewa ha Mangewa ha guy ami. He was speaking uh, with his people. No kunda gis ngale mwe yes one die one is surviving. He asked them if they saw them, and they said yes, one died and one survived. He said to them, search them. They searched me, and they removed my ID card. And he said to him, sir, this is a Gambian. They are, they are Gambian. And he said to them, whatever. He said to them, whatever, stand properly. Check them very well. Uh, you, you did not go to, uh, more, you did not attend modern schooling in Gambia. You, well, perhaps I should rephrase that. You did not attend English school. You attended Arabic school. Wow. Yangulo school Angalere, school Arab, Munga Yanga. Wow. Are yes. you able to speak English or you able to remember those conversations? Danga Muna Laka Angal and Danga Muna Dig Angal Chilling Don Wanunu. Lunua, what they said, Uncle Deglu. I was listening to Yanguma Angale. I was not uh, literate in English. One day, Yalamena Masituti. But God has given me a little bit. Of it. So, in a sense, you understand the language. Yes. Wow. Yes. And the conversations you are telling us is what you understood and what you can recall from what happened. Wow. Yes. So, the words you are telling us are not necessarily exactly what they said. Because 
could be, but I was listening. Okay, proceed, please. Hey, Galil. So, boom, boom, hello, bossam. After he said that to his boss, bossam, when I go, could they will side call them? I'm a yep, not getting a good idea. The boss said to him, the one that is not dead, search him, whatever he has in him, bring it out. He took out my wallet. He took off my watch. He also took off the chain I had on my neck. Uh, oh, made out of what? That, that that chain chain la one. Nine to five, la silver. Okay. Right. Proceed, please. And then Kisaj Pamane. After he removed uh, all these things, the other one searched Pamane. Ugene bumper bag and be. Brought out his, his bumper bag. Ubiko. He opened it. This for Halis. My English Halis. Why how many yatala? So money in there. I saw the money, but I did not know how much it in was. Which, in which uh, currency? Halis is a fan loan. Dalasi. Okay, proceed, please. Ugel bag be teko. Took the bag and held onto it. Mutonko. He turned it. Who said jacket and be? Si po sami. Oh, he turned him. He and turned pa man. Oh yes, and checked his jacket, the pockets. Po si ganawa me. And also the back pockets. No lim for gain a homalala. There was something he brought out. I'm not sure what it was. Uteko. He held it. And what happened after that? No he ganaw lulu. I was there with them. But until I said to him, Sir, assist me or just finish me off. You are lucky. He said to me, You are lucky. People are Gambian. Otherwise, I will finish you. And I could then finish me. I said to him, then finish me. Or you help me. Or you help me. Did he finish you? Obviously not. He doesn't finish me. <laughs> Did he help you? <laughs> he assisted me, but he was slow. When I saw the pickup coming, when I saw the pickup coming, I said, this could be the one coming to take us away. The pickup came. We were boarded on the pickup. I was laid at the back. Two. Then I was laid at the back. I was the back. I was laid at the back. I was laid So when we came out up to the uh, facility, that is in, at Jiboro by the border. The police station be. At the police station. They took us behind. We went inside. And they left us there. For about 30 minutes. We were there for about 30 minutes. At one time. I was just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, waste time be. I'm just estimating because I did not have time. But I'm just trying to estimate the time wasted. Silan Silan Bena Tubab Nyo, Homa Italian La Homa Homa Turkila. That was when one of their uh, who, White one. Yeah, um the uh, uh, European uh, colleague came. I'm not sure whether he was an Italian or a Turkish. But in a turbi wa man te on to one yom sen turbi the power nahadi. Mom mom more train guy jungle as he I cannot recall his name because his name is difficult to pronounce, but he was did, the one who trained the junglers. Uh, did you give that name to the investigators? I think I told them if I have not forgotten. Are you familiar with the name Francis? Francis, yes. What's the last name? I forgot the surname. Caso? Yeah, something like that. Because we know the Malache. So I say Maham Lolo. I mean, I'm not talking Maham Lolo. The reason why I got to know his name is because. Tell us. 
So Kogo boom you a fake must pick up the mangate. When he came and found me lying inside that pickup. Jello Hombi Bara Mambi. He took his finger. Do go swamp beer pahi and inserted it into the hole created by the bullet. He touched it like this until he touched my bone. Tell you are wounding me. And I said to him, You are wounding me. Say he told me you are a lucky child. <laughs> no, no, me me I'm not a lucky child, me I'm a dead child. That was how I responded to him in English. Then? Tell Feka Mungitawa Bena Ami Bena Ami Mungitawa Mom. So I'm the Munako soldier. Wa a soldier. When a soldier, be, is it a Gambian? Munako, yes, it's a Gambian. At that time, he was standing there alongside one other military officer who asked him, Is he Gambian? And he said, Yes, he's Gambian. Tell him, Why you don't finish him? He's suffering like this. Lokotwa. Munako, no. My boss said, No. Who said that? Tubabi. Okay. Francis. It was Francis who said uh, that. Mokawa Ami, Munakulta Ki Yen Finusulenko. He was the one who said to that military officer, Why did you not finish him off? Noko did it. And the military officer said to him, my No. Boss, so my, boss my boss said that we should leave him. What happened after that? Then Mohe went out Lulu Nak. If you want you, you finish me. And I said to him, if you want, finish me. And then? He tell me, you never die. He said that, or did he say that? He said that. You he mean, you mean Francis or Francis? Francis. Francis, you will never die. Francis said that to me, that you will never die. And what happened after that? After that, we were taken to Brikama. There also we spent 30 minutes in the way I estimated. During, throughout this period, were you given any first aid? Did it. No. And then what happened after that? 30 yeah. minutes in Birkama, what when happened you, after that? Then I'm minutes in the Birkama, what happened after that? They went inside and they were discussing their own. Where exactly in Birkama were you taken? At the police station. At the police station. Yeah. 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 Where exactly in Birkama were you taken? And then what happened after that? What happened after that? What happened after that? They came out. Tal Otobi. They started the vehicle. No Yundum. We came to Yundum. Yep. All of all that while. Ange hall. I was looking. Ange joy. I was crying. Ange bleed Otobi. I was bleeding in the vehicle. Yon be bah or rang rang be. The road was bad. The it was bumpy. When Akse Yundum. When we got to Yundum. They stopped there also. They went inside. They discussed. Police came out. They looked at me. Oh, sorry. And they said, Oh, sorry. What I mean Where are you from? Tell him Talending. And I told them Talending. Oh, sorry. And then, what happened after that? They came again. You continue. And we continued. When we, before we got to Lamin, that was when I fainted. I was in the hospital. I was in the hospital. I was in the hospital. We got to Banjul and I was in the way. It was when I recovered that I saw myself in the emergency ward. I was on the bed. My brother, 
my brothers, my sisters, my sisters, my uncle, my uncle, Bangfa. All of them were there. Do you know how they came to know that you were at the hospital? They said that they heard that they were people who were shot. And that the name they had was Gore. Pamane. And Pamane. That was when they came to the hospital to confirm if that was true. So you nekafa. We were there. So langi bari. There was commotion. Gai pa mane nyo cho langi bari hachantabi. The people of pa mane came. There was a lot of commotion. There was a push and pull. So but I mean yo. Until the soldiers came. Aho. They stood. Bir emergency and bir drive ni nyo push and pull. Inside the emergency and they were trying to. Trying to drive away people, there was a push and pull. Others were saying, "You have killed our, our, our relative." No. You have killed our relatives, and now you are driving us away, trying to uh, be forceful on us. If you want, kill all of us. You know, send Charlie. You know. That was when the, the commotion was uh, managed and it subsided, and I was taken to 6 and 7. That was when I was taken upstairs. And uh, did you, what kind do you recall, do you know whether you were taken to theater or not? Theater. Were you operated on? No. No. I wasn't operated on. Uh, I was taken to the X-ray. That was where they took me to. Uh, and can you tell the commission where you were shot? Wow, Fila. Fila. Uh, on the left side, on the left side of your chest, uh, were you told how close the blood was to your heart? Doctor Bumadon said, "One inch more." The doctor that uh, was overseeing my case said it was just one inch away. So for how long were you in Ward Six and Seven? I was there for a month. And three weeks. 21 days. Yeah. And what happened after that? After my release, when I was released, I was released by a police. They left me with one police officer. What was the police officer to do with you? Police, you buy one. Lum don't worry the fire. Koko the phone call put the magare. He was supposed to guard me. Do you know why? I'm gonna look at my radon guard. After some man, sila mawahal, mom police be mo si bopam. After he spoke to me, ne ma so kisay man eka fi. And he said to me, the reason for my being here is to save your life. That police officer today is at the police, at the Sukuta police station as an inspector. He said to me, the reason for my being here is to save your life. From what? Because I said to him, for what reason? And he said to me, because you were shot by the junglers. And one has died. And you are the one remaining. So whatever the case may be, 
as a witness. I can always be your witness. I can assist you. And know who are coming after you. And also people that you may know or you may not know, people that you may want to meet or those that you may not want to meet. Okay. And I said, okay. I said, my brothers are here. There was one that was uh, sleeping with me to, at the same bed. And also the children of my older brother. Some of them sometimes used to spend the night with me. No. So when you were discharged from hospital, uh, did the wound, had the wound already healed? Jamano jini la baye na dila gene chula petanbe. Dhabo boga nyu ganyu biwirna. No biruton. It was not healed. Get this on. It was yet to be fully come uh, healed. Anjune kom legi. Unge hawa tena legi muna nyu bisuma kere manyo the dress. But they said since it was uh, now better, I could go home and be coming. To have it dressed. The bullet that hit you, was it completely removed from your body or was it not? What the doctor said was that the bullet that was, that shot me was the one that went through me and killed Pamane. So after you were released, after you were discharged from the hospital, were you free to go home? I was not released. What happened? Before I was released from the hospital, police were the police the police officer came to me and said to me, the doctor said that he's going to release you today. But I have been asked to take you to the headquarters. Which headquarters? Banjul Police Station. Banjul Police Station headquarters. And uh, were you eventually taken there? them. I said, well, let's go. And then what happened? Wacha, she soof. We came down the stairs. I asked him, are you taking a vehicle? He said, I am not with money. police station. And I said to him, I cannot walk from here up to the police headquarters. Okay, by taxi, my guess, my boss, and I He said to me, Well, let me take a taxi, and when we arrive, my boss will pay. Okay, I said to him, Okay, I get Banjil Police Station. When we got to the Banjil Police Station, at the counter, I stood by the counter, Wahak Bosam, he spoke to his boss. Whether he paid the taxi or not, I know nothing about it. And that one said to me, come and sit around here. I went and I sat behind the counter. I sat there. No one said anything to me. There was one police officer seated there. He looked at me and asked me what happened. I said to him, I should be asking you what happened. He said to me, well, what brought you here? And I said to him, your fellow uh, police officers were the ones that brought me here. I said, okay. And they said, okay. He asked me again, were you fighting? And I said to him, no. 
What happened to your hand? I said to him, I had an accident. He asked me what kind of accident. I said to him, I was shot by the junglers. Then he said to me, Oh, at Umorto. I said to him, Yes. Oh, you are so lucky. Said to me, you are not dying now. I said, yes, death is destined by God. I feel you. I said to him, yes. This is what God destined. Did they let you go? They didn't release me. What Mom, happened next? After I was called upstairs, I went along with the police officer and we went upstairs. Last floor, we. At the last floor, you have officer They took me to Jesus' office. My talk. I sat down and faced him just as here. He said to me, why wouldn't you stop selling cannabis? I said to him, I did not sell cannabis. Uh, uh, thai, thai means drugs. Thai, thai involves, includes cannabis, it includes other drugs. Thank you, sir. I said to him, I do not sell drugs. He said to me, are you aware that you were shot by an AK-47? And you did not die? He took his pistol from inside the drawer and placed it on top of the table. He said to me, if you do not stop selling drugs, I said to him, I do not sell drugs. I will finish you. He said to me, I will finish you. I said, I don't afraid. And I said to him, I am not afraid. I said, what hit me like this is even more powerful than this. And if you take this one and use it on me also, I am not afraid. You will not make me accept something. Was this the first interview you had after you arrived at the place? I police police When I left from JSO, I was picked up by the NIA. Uh, uh, the question is, was that the first interview you had with the police officers at the police station? That was the first. Inside Banjul. Prior to your meeting with Mr. Sow, were you asked to give a statement? Balanga Jatayo ak Mr. Sow Mumu. What was the drug squad office? That was at the drug squad office. Was it before you meet, met Mr. Sow or after? Dahlolu Balanga gis Mr. Sow la wala gana bo gisante mumbe pare. I was taken to JSO. He spoke to me. And he was saying if I did not stop selling drugs. And after we finished that discussion, that was when I was taken to the drug squad. Madam drug squad, when you talk. I went to the drug squad and we sat down. There was someone seated down there. I'm not sure whether it was their boss or... Boy and he told his uh, 
accident your boss said to me, do you know that the person you were with is a, a drug dealer? I said to him, I am not aware. He said to me, you are, waste, you are disturbing yourself. You are wasting your time, I guess. Yeah. Huh? Proceed. I said to him, no, sir. I said to him, I am not aware of the time. I am not aware of the time. He said to me, I said to him, I'm not wasting my time. And he said to me, whether you speak the truth or not, when we are done with you, we will lock you up. I said to him, yes. I said to him, you have the power, but God too has power. It's better. He said to me, it is better. You say that. Pamane Momom Taibi. That Pamane was the one who owned the drugs. I said to him, no. What, what drugs? He said to me, did you not see the drugs? And I said to him, no, I did not see the drugs. I said to him, where is the drug? Because you, because you, if I had seen it here, I can say to you, this is the bag. But I have not seen the bag. Don't direct. And you cannot just simply tell me drugs, and I have not seen any drugs. And he said to me, you are stubborn. You are disturbing yourself. I said yes. That was when the NIA came and picked me up from there. NIA office. And they took me to the NIA office. When I got there, office. they put me inside one office. And they were inside. And I was sitting there. My whole time. I looked at the time. When I left the hospital, up till now, I did not have even water to drink. They have not given me any lunch. Up till now, I have been kept in one place. I don't know what these people want. And what time was that? Around three to four. The whole time, they sent office with three. When I the afternoon at, or in the morning? Afternoon. And what time did you leave the hospital? Half past nine. Half past nine. Half past nine. Half past nine. And then what happened? So you talk, man, it's my health name. Bungo health or it's my health. My oh, better brother. Man, I go brother. Man, I go yes. Man, I go. I'm a bungo high yo. So when I was thinking about this thing in my mind, I called one officer there and uh, I told him that I wanted to speak to him. Okunyo. He came. Uh huh. You are Musa, man. Okay, yes. He said, "Oh, you are Musa," and I said, "Yes." Okay. So how is your body? And he said to me, "So how is your body?" Okay, it's not easy. Okay, nekulu, mangi amiti fumanekani. I told him it's not easy. I am feeling pain where I am now. Mayaga talk, and I have been seated for a long time. Ega guachabi. You going up and down? Nekani, sumo fi mangi jump. And right now, I am having uh, palpitations. Pal pal palpitations. Yeah. If you could assist me and tell me exactly what is happening. Or you take me to the prison. Or you release me to go home. I am tired. He said to me, well, you have not accepted 
to say that you and Pamani are usually the ones that went around selling drugs. Lolo. I said to him, well, that, if you say that, Dunga. you will be mistaken. Because you, because you Luhel. what happened Luhel. was not in your presence. You cannot simply say drugs, 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 drugs when you have not gone to the soldiers to ask them about those drugs. I, I said to him, where are the drugs? Go to the soldiers and ask them about the drugs. They took the motorcycle. They took the motorbike. They have the bag. Let them bring the bag. So that you could see what is inside it. Bring the bag. 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 I said, truly, truly speaking, if you have anything to ask me, I have already told you. Uh, were you released? They did not release me. Well, Mr. Chair, perhaps maybe we should leave it at that for uh, until after the first break. Mr. Chair, you Thank you, Council, and thank you, Mr. Sala. We'll take a 30 minute break and come back at 12 noon. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.